It's just a fan fiction, a story written by me, a writer. This has nothing to do with mention ideal BTS members, real life event, behavior or characteristics. Fake sound videos which are used in this video are not mine. Credit goes to rightful owners. But the editing and the storyline is mine. Do not copy it. The characters of this story would be flawed, gray, especially main deaths. So do not take them as ideal persons. The story might be dark for some readers. Read at your own risk. What are you saying? How can that hurt Chris uncle? You are again manipul- Ask your father or brother why and ask them. Taeyang looked into her eyes. Something in them radiated sincerity. Vyan felt devastated as this many years she just thought her uncle cut ties with them after marrying his choice of women. There was a brief moment of silence between them. This is the reason I denied to know you that night, Vyan. Now we can tell, call each other as I am afraid it would leave traces before we leave from here. We are not leaving, Thea. A tear left her eyes as she told him that. What are you? I am telling right. My family would have pacified me that night only. But they didn't, even after knowing that I am carrying your child. So I can't give them another betrayal for giving me my child a chance to leave. So please, leave from my life. Dolce, what are you saying, love? Please, Taeyang, open the door. Let this be our last meeting. Are you even understanding your own words? He then cupped her face in his hands, keeping his panic aside. Don't be angry for that night, Dolce. It's true, I can never stand in front of your family and ask your hand from them. Nor I can take you to my mother, but I can always proudly say, You are my love, mother of my child, whenever, whoever do you want, after we leave from this place. Please, don't think otherwise. But her next words broke him in a way he couldn't think was possible. Please open the door. It's, it's just a matter of some days, Vyan. I have made arrangement with my savings. Don't make it hard on me. It will badly affect the baby. The young stopped on his tactics and detached his hands from her face. He then turned off the lights and opened the door for her. He saw his love leaving him for forever with his child. As soon as she came outside, she heard her bodyguard's familiar voice. How did you get stuck inside, Vyan? I was searching for you. I thought you... When, when a lot of patients came, one of them accidentally pressed me by this door. And that time this door was opened. So I got inside. But then it got jammed. I didn't bring my phone today, so I couldn't call you, but luckily it opened after a few time. You were not feeling dizziness or any such thing, right? Vine shook her head, to which Ethan nodded. Let's go to your doctor then. It's, if it's okay, then drink some water. Come. She nodded and it didn't go unnoticed by her that he not even once called her pie. Fratello, will you come inside with me for checkup? up 
I I will be outside the door. Don't want to invite any private moments. He said breaking her already broken heart into more pieces. After her checkup Ethan saw Wayne coming out of her doctor's cabin and immediately sat up from the chair. He noticed how her eyes were puffy and nose were red. What happened? Pa- Wayne, is everything fine? Hearing his worried voice, Wayne clutched the reports in her arms tightly. She then came towards his side and s- smiled a little. Yeah, everything's. It's it's just I got emotional seeing my baby first time. You know, Fratello, it's it's so tiny, just like a dot. But doctor said it's growing healthily. Ethan nodded his head, understanding how expecting parents got emotional during this time. He then truly felt bad for her that she had to experience it without a partner. only if she chose other man then they went towards their car after taking some medicines from the hospital pharmacy After reaching the parking area of the hospital, Ethan opened the car door for Wayne and sat on the back seat. He himself sat on the driver's seat. He didn't make her sit on the front seat like a previous days. It was a way for him to show her that he was just an employee to her now, not her any fratello. He was silent and was about to start the car engine when she spoke. Will will you take care of my child and fratello like you did with me? Will you love them? She asked him while feeling overwhelmed. He looked at her through the rear view. Will you? But instead of answering her questions, he asked her in a cold voice, "You met him today, right? In the storeroom, it was all his setup, aren't it?" Unable to answer him, she looked down. Seeing her silent, he assumed he was right. There was a brief moment of silence between them. Choose one side, Wayne. One side. If you want to believe one, then do it blindly. But mind you, you have to face the consequences all by yourself. Don't make a fool of us or yourself by wanting both. You always knew from the very start that you can't be with both sides. So do think wisely in this situation. You have a child to take care of. Betrayal is your choice then do it once and all don't pick a wound over and over again which would make the wound septic though i am sure the scar of the wound would always remain the same always Seeing this he started the car whereas she looked outside the window and her cheeks got filled with her tears Next day at Min's mansion where Park Jimin was staying as a guest.
Vaigen and Jimin were standing on the balcony of the Mint's mansion. She was silent, yet he could clearly sense her nervousness by the way she was fondling with her dresses him. Jimin looked everywhere on the balcony to see if there was any hidden camera with Mike or not. Being a future capo, he was well trained to find any of those. I guess there's not hidden camera here, right, Miss Min? His sudden question startled her as she didn't expect him to ask her that. She quickly composed herself and answered. No, there's only a CCTV cameras which don't have mics. But why? Then listen carefully and keep your neutral expression. Do not react much. Mr. Park, I know you are carrying Kim's offspring in your own. It's yours and Taehyung's child. She got frozen hearing him. Wasn't this news supposed to be hidden from him? Don't show any reaction. Her palm automatically went towards her belly as if shielding her unborn baby from its father's rival. What are Thayang himself told me this, Miss Min? To make you believe that he actually met me and told me this, he gave me this ring. See? He placed his palm on the balcony railing and gestured her to see his index finger where he was wearing a gold ring. That delicate gold ring which had written Dolce's love with a small ruby on top. The ruby in that ring was not perfect shape. He had owned the ring cause he didn't want anyone to suspect anything, seeing him showing her a ring on their first meeting. She recognized the ring was the same ring as she gifted Taeyang on their third year anniversary. Why? He came to me two days ago. What do you want, Kim? You asked for a meeting your mortal enemy at a VIP bar, on top of the end, unarmed, alone. I need your help, Park. Thea greeted his teeth as he said that in a cold tone. Ha! Huh, and what made you think so that I would help you? Aren't you always eyeing my shares of bars here? I will give all of them to you. All of them, which are under my name. Jimin knitted his brows at his sudden proposal. Why the sudden generosity, Kim? How can I believe that it's not your plan to strike me at behind? How can one strike when he is already in a big mess? What do you mean? His words got stuck in his throat as Taeyang knelt down in front of him and lowered his head. Please, I need your help. His voice was low, whereas Jimin couldn't believe his eyes, not ears. His mortal enemy from college days was kneeling in front of him.
the kim tae young who's ever so dominant and didn't miss an opportunity to turn jemin down his biggest competitor was kneeling in front of jemin a sight jimin never imagined he would ever witness get up and say what have you want Tiang got up and started to tell him. He got the proposal for Min's daughter, right? Accept the proposal. Why? Vaiyan, I mean Min Vaiyan, and the I get together almost five years. She's my girlfriend, and we are expecting. Jim's eyes widen, hearing him. But your family's enmity is known for more than decades now. That's why I am telling you to accept the proposal so that the main family would become busy with the wedding preparations. And during that time, Vaiyan and I would elope from here. Unless if my family finds out about this, I wouldn't even get her body to Moran. He was leaving. He more like told himself this to which Tayang didn't react. You also would need to tell her that you saying yes for the wedding is a way to distract her family. He then took out a ring from his ring finger and gave him that. Show her this ring. She would believe that you really met me. J- Jimin took the ring from him. Don't forget to give me your bar scheme. I own. You two don't even dare to hurt her or talk rudely with her. Whenever the situation would be ready for you both to elop, he would inform me and I would you. Then send my men to pick you up with an excuse of wedding shopping for you. Are you understanding, Miss Min? Miss Min, as his voice brought back her from another world, she looked at him, whereas her nails stick into her palm painfully. Huh? I asked, did you understand the whole plan? She looked at him blankly as she started to feel lightheaded. Just one question lingered in, in her mind. What should she do now?